episode 75. Ron stared at Hermione. Then he grinned again. Okay, okay, we know you're a girl, he said. That do? Will you come now? I've already told you, Hermione said, very angrily. I'm going with someone else. And she stormed off toward the girls' dormitories again. She's lying, said Ron flatly, watching her go. She's not, said Ginny quietly. Who is it then, said Ron sharply. I'm not telling you. It's her business, said Ginny. Right, said Ron, who looked extremely put out. This is getting stupid. Ginny, you can go with Harry and I'll just... I can't, said Ginny, and she went scarlet too. I'm going with... with Neville. He asked me when Hermione said no, and I thought, well, I'm not going to be able to go otherwise. I'm not in fourth year. She looked extremely miserable. I think I'll go and have dinner, she said, and she got up and walked off to the portrait hall, her head bowed. Ron goggled at Harry. What's got into them? he demanded. But Harry had just seen Parvati and Lavender come in through the portrait hall. The time had come for drastic action. Wait here, he said to Ron, and he stood up, walked straight up to Parvati and said, Parvati, will you go to the ball with me? Parvati went into a fit of giggles. Harry waited for them to subside, his fingers crossed in the pockets of his robes. Yes, all right then, she said finally, blushing furiously. Thanks, said Harry in relief. Lavender, will you go with Ron? She's going with Seamus, said Parvati, and the pair of them giggled harder than ever. (sighs) Harry sighed. Can't you think of anyone who'd go with Ron, he said, lowering his voice so that Ron wouldn't hear. What about Hermione Granger, said Parvati. She's going with someone else. Parvati looked astonished. Ooh, who, she said keenly. Harry shrugged. No idea, he said. So what about Ron? Well, said Parvati slowly, I suppose my sister might. Padma, you know, in Ravenclaw. I'll ask her if you like. Yeah. That would be great, said Harry. Let me know, will you? And he went back over to Ron, feeling that this ball was a lot more trouble than it was worth, and hoping very much that Padma Patil's nose was dead center. Chapter 23. The Yule Ball. Despite the very heavy load of homework that the fourth years had been given for the holidays, Harry was in no mood to work when term ended and spent the whole week leading up to Christmas enjoying himself as fully as possible along with everyone else. Gryffindor Tower was hardly less crowded now than during term time. It seemed to have shrunk slightly too as its inhabitants were being so much rowdier than usual. Fred and George had had a great success with their canary creams And for the first couple of days of the holidays, people kept bursting into feather all over the place. Before long, however, all the Gryffindors had learnt to treat food anybody else offered them with extreme caution, in case it had a canary cream concealed in the center. And George confided to Harry that he and Fred were now working on developing something else. Harry made a mental note never to accept so much as a crisp from Fred and George in the future. He still hadn't forgotten Dudley in the tongue toffee. Snow was falling thickly upon the castle and its grounds now. The pale blue Bobetan's carriage looked like a large, chilly, frosted pumpkin next to the iced gingerbread house that was Hagrid's cabin. While the Durmstrang ship's portholes were glazed with ice and the rigging white with frost, The house elves down in the kitchen were outdoing themselves with a series of rich, warming stews and savory puddings, and only Fleur de la Cour seemed to be able to find anything to complain about. It is too heavy or the Hogwarts food, they heard her saying grumpily as they left the great hall behind her one evening. 
Ron, skulking behind Harry, keen not to be spotted by Fleur. I will not fit into my dress robes. Oh, there's a tragedy, said Hermione snappily, as Fleur went out into the entrance hall. She really thinks a lot of herself, that one, doesn't she? Hermione, who are you going to the ball with, said Ron. He kept springing this question on her, hoping to startle her into a response by asking it when she least expected it. However, Hermione merely frowned and said, I'm not telling you. You'll just make fun of me. You're joking, Weasley, said Malfoy behind them. You're not telling me someone's asked that to the ball. Not the long mullered mudblood. Harry and Ron both whipped around, but Hermione said loudly, waving to someone over Malfoy's shoulder, Hello, Professor Moody. Malfoy went pale and jumped backwards, looking wildly around for Moody. But he was still up at the staff table, finishing his stew. Twitchy little ferret, aren't you, Malfoy? said Hermione scathingly. And she, Harry and Ron, went up the marble staircase, laughing heartily. Hermione, said Ron, looking sideways at her, suddenly frowning. Your teeth. What about them? she said. Well, they're different. I've just noticed. Of course they are. Did you expect me to keep those fangs Malfoy gave me? No, I mean, they're different to how they were before he put a hex on you. They're all straight and and normal-sized. Hermione suddenly smiled very mischievously, and Harry noticed it too. It was a very different smile to the one he remembered. Well, when I went up to Madame Pomfrey to get them shrunk, she held up a mirror and told me to stop her when they were back to how they normally were, she said. And I just let her carry on a bit. <laughs> she smiled even more widely. Mum and Dad won't be too pleased. I've been trying to persuade them to let me shrink them for ages, but they wanted me to carry on with my brace. You know, they're dentists. They just don't think teeth and magic should... <gasps> Look! Pigwidgeon's back! Ron's tiny owl was twittering madly on the top of the icicle-laden banisters, a scroll of parchment tied to his leg. People passing him were pointing and laughing, and a group of third-year girls paused and said, Oh, look at the weeny owl. Isn't he cute? Stupid little feathery git, Ron hissed, hurrying up the stairs and snatching Pigwidgeon up. You bring letters straight to the addressee. You don't hang around showing off. Pigwidgeon hooted happily, his head protruding over Ron's fist. The third-year girls all looked very shocked. Clear off, Ron snapped at them, waving the fist, holding Pigwidgeon, who hooted more happily than ever as he soared through the air. Here, take it, Harry, Ron added in an undertone as the third-year girls scuttled away, looking scandalized. He pulled Sirius's reply off Pigwidgeon's leg. Harry pocketed it, and they hurried back to Gryffindor Tower to read it. Everyone in the common room was much too busy letting off more holiday steam to observe what anyone else was up to. Harry, Ron, and Hermione sat apart from everyone else by a dark window that was gradually filling up with snow, and Harry read out, Dear Harry, congratulations on getting past the horn tail. Whoever put your name in that goblet shouldn't be feeling too happy right now. I was going to suggest a conjunctivitis curse, as a dragon's eyes are its weakest point. That's what Crumb did, Hermione whispered. But your way was better. I'm impressed. Don't get complacent, though, Harry. You've only done one task. Whoever put you in for the tournament's got plenty more opportunity if they're trying to hurt you. Keep your eyes open, particularly when the person we discussed is around and concentrate on keeping yourself out of trouble. Keep in touch. I still want to hear about anything unusual. Serious. He sounds exactly like Moody, said Harry quietly, tucking the letter away inside his robes. Constant vigilance! You think I walk around with my eyes shut, banging off the walls? But he's right, Harry, said Hermione. You have still got two tasks to do. You really ought to have a look at that egg, you know, and start working out what it means. 
Hermione, he's got ages, snapped Ron. 